Okay, <clears throat> I think I'm going to get started. Um, can you see full screen mode now? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, okay, welcome back um, to Python for STEM. I'm Fernando Romero Lopez. I continue with the class um, of the lecture that was given um, two days ago uh, about modeling and differential equations. So this is the second part of that of that particular topic. Um, let me start with a brief um, recap of, of what we did um, two days ago. So we covered several concepts in, in, the, in the realm of physics. We discussed velocity, acceleration, and how they are uh, the instantaneous change of, of, of position for the velocity of, on, and of velocity for the acceleration. Um, this comes as the limit when the changes in position over changes in time goes to zero and therefore velocity and acceleration can be expressed as derivatives um, of, of a function. In particular, the velocity is a derivative of position and acceleration is the derivative of, of the velocity. Um, so um, one of the main things that we did um, the other day was to, to solve numerically differential equations, and in particular, first order differential equations of the form like this, but also second order differential equations on this form. We implemented or we looked at an implementation on, of a way to solving them numerically using recursive uh, recursive techniques in which uh, to compute the next step in the differential equation, we start with something that we know, the value of the function at some particular point, and then we iterate with these increments here. Um, this is for the first order differential equation, but for second order differential equations, the trick was to split the second order differential equation into two different um, first order differential equations of this form, uh, where g is the first derivative of the function f and f is, is the function itself. Okay, we implemented this in Python and we were looking at, at some examples on this. In particular, one of the plots that we looked at um, on Tuesday was of this form. So we, we started with some exercise where some initial position and velocity was given for some projectile. Uh, with some particular value of the acceleration, like uh, this one minus 9.8, which is uh, that of the <clears throat> that of gravity on the surface of Earth uh, in meters per, se uh, per, sec per second square. Um, so if we have a constant acceleration, that leads to a velocity that increases linearly. We know the analytic solution of this, which is given by, by this uh, green circles, but we also know the numerical solution we, which we can obtain in this form here by, uh, by iterating this equation here. Um, okay, notice here that here, the, uh, there's a little type that I'll fix, which is A here should be T rather than, um, or, or delta or something else. And it's not to be confused with the same letter. I'll fix that. Um, and then once we have the velocity, we can also compute the position as a function of time, which is uh, given in this form here. So uh, we know this again analytically because we have the expressions for the movement of a projectile in a constant acceleration and we can also obtain them numerically. Okay, so before moving on, let's go back to a Jupyter notebook. Um, this is the same that we, or this is a snippet of what we saw the other day. Um, this is the kind of function. So we start by importing all the modules and defining some auxiliary functions that we need. We have this routine here um, the second uh, second order differential equation, which solves the differential equations in this recursive way. Um, so we need to pass uh, h, which is the second derivative of the initial function. We need to pass different um, values for the initial conditions of the differential equation, and then an array of times or or, or values of the variable that we want to evaluate uh, the the solution to the differential equation, and some some step step size uh, for the solution. Okay. The way this, this function works is by going over a for loop in this form here. And so we have a list with our solutions and we start appending, adding to the end of that list in this way, the next step by adding the increments on the both the first derivative and the second derivative. Okay. This here is just a function to plot. Um, you can have the example layer of this notebook. And this is the kind of plot that we were producing. So we have, uh, we can choose the function. So this is the input. What is the value of the acceleration and how it changes over time? We also need to start to know where to start, and then we can play around with this and do different functions. For instance, we can put a constant velocity, which is this is the function a. So a constant velocity would lead 
to the following plot, which is what we what we know that remember that the the green circles are the analytic solution. So if we put a constant acceleration, we match exactly analytical results. But if we change the the, uh, the shape of the of the a function, the acceleration, for instance, we can make it t or, or t squared or something else, then we'll see that um, <clears throat> function will grow like this. The numerical solution is in red, and this does not match what we would expect now. This is this is to be expected because this is you know that that those solutions that are implemented are really based on a constant acceleration. Okay, so you can play with this with this snippet of code. You can change, for instance, the step size. So you can make it you know, you can make it more you know, smaller, like this, ten to the minus two. You can that would lead to very similar results. Doesn't change too much. But you can also make the time step. You know, make this plot longer, so you can choose to make this plot uh, to a different range and things like that. Yeah, like. Yeah, just a bit to think, and then you produce a different plot up to t equals t equals ten, and so. On. Yeah, so I, this has been shared uh, to you on on the on what will be shared to you, so you can play around and, and explore different solutions to this differential equation, as well as these as different ways of plotting them. Okay, um, so perhaps this is a good point. We have one moment to to ask for questions regarding um, previous lecture. Well, feel free to um, put any questions in the chat uh, that you may have along the, along the lecture and I'll, one of us will make sure to answer them. Okay, um, so now after having summarized what we saw um, on, on Tuesday, let's go to the, to, the, to the lecture of the day, which as I promise you are differential equations. So it's the same kind of mathematical um, <clears throat> entity that we're going to be using, but now we're going to use it to model a pandemic. Uh, again, this feels a little bit to 2020, but, but it's, still, it's still relevant and will be relevant in the future for sure in some form. So okay, let's look at it. Uh, we're going to use a model. A model is it's really a simplification of reality. And then by the fact that it's, it's a simplification of reality, all models are necessarily wrong. Uh, but even if they are wrong, they, they do tell us about features of like how populations behave or other physical systems behave. And, and, and they can indeed be useful if they are you know, close enough to reality in some form. So let's go for it. Um, an example, this is real data that you can see of, uh, of the, of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. We're having here cases and hospitalizations and this is real data and what we're gonna try to do Today is to develop or to explore a model. Uh, it's, it's established model, so we're not developing anything. We're really rather applying this model to, to it. And you will get, we will see that we can get curves or like plots of this form here, which at least qualitatively resemble the actual data or what's actually going on. Okay. Of course, uh, it's not it's not meant to be in um, let's say a quantitative comparison. It's not meant to be, you know. Uh, the, the, the parameters in the model have not been adjusted to match the data. So it's just to show that, that models do or can qualitatively indeed resemble reality. Okay. So we'll, um, what we're seeing today is how to basically make the plot down here and what equations, what differential equations it is based upon. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go at it. It's going to be a lot of math, but it's something that we feel basically or we saw uh, uh, earlier in this week. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. Um, so epidemi epidemiology is the study and analysis of distribution patterns and determinants of health and disease conditions in defined populations. Okay? Um, so we're gonna be doing, uh, we're gonna be using differential equations to model behaviors in, epidemi in epidemiology. Okay, so uh, we're gonna be using the SIR or SIR model which is a very simple or the simplest perhaps epidemiological model um, that has three different categories of populations. So everyone, so what we do is we, we assume that um, in some particular population, which is isolated from, from the rest of the, the world. So you can think of this as an island or something like that. There are three different categories. There's susceptible people, people who can get sick uh, 
and have not been sick yet, then we can assume that there's another category, which is the infectious. So the people that can, that, that, that are currently sick and can get other people sick. And then there's another category, which is, we call the recovered, or you can think of this as removed. And this is basically when, every, when, when a person gets uh, sick, then after some time, you will go into the category of recovered or removed, which means they can either recover from the sickness and develop immunity, or they can, or they, 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 uh, they pass away and then they're not anymore part of the population. Okay, so susceptible. This is someone who is not sick, but can get sick if it enters in contact, um, if they enter in contact with, uh, with a susceptible, uh, with an infectious person. So we will label the uh, susceptible people as S of T, which means the number of people that are susceptible as a function of time. There is the, inf the infectious. These are people that are sick and contagious. These people move around. And though they're sick, they move around and they actually can, uh, they can interact with other people and by being in contact with them, they can get them sick. And we will label this as, as I, so infectious I of T. And then there's the recover and remove, which is someone who was previously infected, but they are not longer, uh, they are not longer infected, which means either they have recovered or they are deceased. And then we will label this as R. Okay, so the total population in, a, in some particular uh, some particular place, in an island, you can think of this, would be N is the total one, is susceptible plus infectious plus recover removed. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's, let's try to write differential equations for this, for this, for all these categories. Okay, so let's start with the infectious. Um, so if someone is infectious, he will get other people, they will get other people sick. Um, and they will get the susceptible people sick, okay? So um, we will label beta as the infection rate. Okay, so this is the probability that someone who is sick infects someone who is susceptible times the people that uh, the infectious person encounters per day, okay? So this would be basically a single individual who is infectious, how many people in average get sick per day. This would be beta. Now, there's this, um, there's this other notion, which is the reproduction number. This probably has appeared in, in the media, and you might have seen this in, in different contexts when describing the, the actual pandemic. So the reproduction number is the number, the total number that single individual gets sick over, over the course of the sickness. If we consider D to be the days that that person is sick, um, and beta is the average number of, of people that a single individual, an infectious individual gets sick, then the reproduction number would be the total days of being sick times the probability of infecting if you, or if they meet someone times the people they encounter every, uh, per day or on average, okay? So having defined this, then let's define another quantity which is part of the model. And this would be the rate of recovery. Um, so the rate of recovery is, Basically, some it's a number that describes how fast or, or slow people uh, transition in from the group of being infected to the group of being recovered or removed. So you can think of this. You can think of let's let's be positive. Let's be positive and optimistic and think that everyone's reco everyone recovers from this particular sickness in this model. So then um, we will see that after an average of D days, then. Uh, a sick individual will be recovered. Okay, so we're not going to use the number of days that it takes to, to recover, but rather the inverse of the number of days. And this is what we will call gamma. So what you can think of this is if gamma is small, this means that D is very large, which means uh, sick individuals are slow to recover. Okay, they take a long time to recover. However, if, D, if, if, if gamma is large, which means that uh, D is very small, then uh, the recovery rate, the recovery would be very quick. Okay, so these are the three main quantities that we will need to start um, describing the dynamics of this of this um, this model, this SIR model. Okay, so here's a uh, flow of what's going on. So we'll have susceptible people that would get uh, that will get. Um, 
they will get sick by some rate. And then this, uh, when, there's, when they're entering contact with infectious individuals, and then this infectious individual will trans slowly transition with some recovery rate into, the, into the, the, the other group, which would be the ones that you know, have recovered and developed immunity. Yeah, but it's, the evolution will be in this way. Okay, so let's write down the equations of, of, this, of this model. Okay, so if beta was the number of people that an infectious person, an infectious person can get sick, and assuming, uh, and this is all, this is thinking, assuming that everyone that they actually encounter are susceptible. However, not everyone is susceptible. Only a few or only a fraction of the overall people are actually susceptible because some others will already be sick or some others will already be recovered. So this means that in a single day, a single infectious person can actually get beta, which is the probability of getting someone sick, times, um, times the fraction of people infected. Okay? So beta times, uh, so the whole, um, the whole change in the population that actually gets sick because of the interactions of, of the susceptible people with the infectious people will be of this form, where beta is the probability of infecting, S over N is the people encountered per day times the actual susceptible population over the total population. And then this, 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 this part here is corresponding for a single infectious person. And so there are not only, there's only not on a single one, but there are many. Therefore, we have to multiply by the number of infectious population overall. Okay? And what this means is that the rate or the change in the susceptible over time will be proportional to this whole factor. And the sign here, minus, tells us that uh, susceptible people can only decrease in the sense of like, you know, if, if you're susceptible, susceptible then um, you can only get sick. And once you've been sick, then that's it. You will always uh, recover and develop immunity in this, at least in this simple model that we are considering. Okay. Of course, this is rate. So this is like, you can think of this as a finite change over some particular day or something like that. And then uh, that's as useful when we consider uh, instantaneous changes rather than average changes. What we take is the limit of this increment where the time uh, or the time that we're considering considering goes to zero. And then this ratio of, of, of increments will go to the derivative or will become the derivative in the limit where capital delta T goes to zero. Okay. So this gives us a differential equation, which is the change in susceptibles over time is given by this, which is to, the, to these parameters, but also the susceptibles itself, themselves and the, uh, the infections. Okay, so we have the first equation in the model, which tells us how susceptible population evolve over time. Now we need two more equations for the infectious and for the recovery. Okay, so let's think about the infectious population. This is a bit more complicated because there will be two different factors that are kind of competing. The infectious people will increase when susceptible population gets sick, but it will also decrease whenever people actually recover. So the increase of infectious people will basically be this one, which is the numbers or the combination that we were just talking about, just because every time a susceptible person gets sick, goes into the other group of infectious. So this is the same rate as before. And now we have to think about how the infectious people recover uh, over time. Okay, so if gamma is the recovery rate, which is the average people, or the average, the inverse of the average days that it takes for an individual to recover, then we have to see that um, um, the rate at which the, the uh, different infected people are leaving the group will be basically uh, if you if you let the if you let d days pass, then the uh, the number of people would have decreased by this factor here. Okay. So in short, the infectious rate or the infectious population will be decreasing with a factor of minus because they're recovering and multiplied uh, proportional to gamma, which is a recovery rate. Okay. Here you can see again, these two competing factors. There are more infectious as time evolves because susceptible people are getting sick, but there are also less infectious people as time passes because they are recovered. So let's put this together. Um, we will have that the change in infectious population over time will be an increase due to susceptible people getting sick and a decrease due to um, infected people, uh, infectious people uh, recovering. 
or you know, going into the group of the removed. Again, this is a finite change. So this is thinking about capital delta means finite increments. But then if we take the limit in which delta, uh, delta t goes to zero, then we will have the differential equation that will look exactly in the same way. Okay, so this is the second differential equation, which tells us how um, infectious population evolve um, over time. And now there's a, the last one, which is the recovered people. Okay, so recovered, in the beginning, there's no recovered, recovered people at all because almost anyone has been sick. And then as time passes, every time someone transitions from the infectious to the recovered, you know, this group will only, on, only grow in one direction. And this is, of course, assuming that the immunity lasts forever, which is an approximation perhaps for a few months, but not, not, not really the case as we want that. Okay, so um, this is rather easy because the, in, you know, the increase in recovered population will simply be the decrease in infectious population. And this is the recovery rate gamma times the infected population with a positive sign as it only grows. And again, we will take the uh, differential form by taking the limiting which change in the time goes, goes to zero. And this will be uh, this differential equation. Okay, uh, so this is just a, a little caveat. We're assuming that people build immunity and stay immune. It's not true. Uh, we know by now this is not actually true for, for, for COVID so, um, and, and for many other sickness. So, well, but it's a good approximation in a short period of time, like of the, in the scale of perhaps like uh, two or three. Okay, so here's here's the summary of what we've been discussing, and this is the three different uh, the three different equations that we that we have. So the change in susceptible over time, they are decreasing because they're getting sick, and they're decreasing at this rate here. Um, the change in infected over time is only increasing. Uh, it's increasing because of the of people getting sick, but also decreasing because of people recovering with the gamma with the recovery rate, and then there is the the recovered or removed. Uh, with the last group, which is only increasing over time because we're assuming that the immunity lasts forever and then increases with the number of people that are actually recovering from, from the sickness. Okay, so it's just, as you look at this, um, it's just really first order differential equations. There's nothing else. There's only a single derivative uh, in each of these equations if we if you change the deltas, the capital deltas by, by derivatives. And then this is something that we actually know how to solve uh, that we we were um, were solving uh, two days ago. Okay, so here's again taking the differential form. So we take um, we take the limit in which the change in time is close to zero, and these are the differential equations that we will solve. However, of course, we will use a discrete version of these equations to to solve them numerically. Okay, um, okay so perhaps it's a good time to ask. Again, for questions, um, if, you have, if you have questions about this particular model, the SIR or SIR for short, um, where you have this qualitative picture where there's a group of susceptible, a group of infectious, a group of removed, and there are transitions of this one between the different groups. Yeah, so any questions? Okay, um, good. So let's refresh, uh, okay, just the animation. <laughs> let's refresh everyone's mind with uh, differential equations being a bit more explicit, uh, in particular focusing on first order differential equations. Okay, good. So a differential equation is this expression here is the derivative of a function equals another function. This is what a differential equation means. And if there's only a single derivative, it's what we call first order differential equation. Okay. So um, in order to solve this numerically, we use this trick, which is just the central, perhaps the central equation of differential calculus in which a derivative is nothing else than the limit in which some increment goes to zero. And it can be expressed as this difference where the function is evaluated a little bit before, a little bit after, and it's divided by uh, the spacing or the step size in this, in this equation. Okay. So what we do is we approximate the actual differential equation, which is this one here, 
by taking the, the by taking this result here with a very small value of a with a very small value of the uh, step size. And then this differential equation up here becomes this equation here, where we it's now this is now basically algebra. And what we do is we turn this um, we turn this difference here in its form, where we have that the function evaluated at x plus the step size equals the function evaluated at x minus the step size plus g, with, which is given to us. Okay, so this is the iterative way that we solve first order differential equation. Okay. Good, so uh, one thing that we can do is since variable names are, are really not important, we can just simply change the name of the variable. And instead of calling it x, we can call it x naught plus a in this form here. And then we can simply drop the, the, the sub index of zero. Okay, so what we really, we will be using to solve differential equations is that the function evaluated at, um, um, evaluated at x plus two times the step size equals the function at the position x plus this increment here, which is g of um, the function g, which is given to us in the differential equation times two times the step size. Okay, so pictorically, what this means is that we start with some initial condition. We know the value of the function of zero. And then we start iterating on this equation here in this form. So first we go from zero to two A with this way. So using this equation up here. Then once we have the function, the value of the function of two A, we go to the next one and we get the function of, um, at four A as a function of two A plus, uh, plus an increment. And we keep iterating this and this way we construct uh, this iterative solution using in Python a for loop to actually um, solve the equations. Okay, so um, now the goal is really to use them in, 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 in solving the, 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 this model for the, or the simplified model for a pandemic. Okay, so uh, before moving on, questions about differential equations and how, how to solve them. Okay, as I said, feel free to please post any questions that you may have anytime in the chat and I'll ask, I'll answer them as, as soon as I see them. Okay, uh, good. So let's go back to our model, which is this one here, the SIR model. Uh, we have three different groups, susceptible, infectious, recovered. Um, these are the changes in this in each population. So susceptible gets sick and they reduce or its value reduces. Infectious uh, increases when people get sick, but also decreases when people uh, recover from their sickness. And then recovered group only increases as, as, as infectious people uh, get better. Okay. So we can write these differential equations here in this form with all we're doing is uh, basically taking the change, which is this one here, everything that appears on this side, multiplying by a finite step small but finite step in step size in time. Uh, so you can think of this as uh, some fraction of a day or something like that. And then we can see that this is a very nice form that, that can be solved iteratively. So if you know some, you know, if you, you know in, in the beginning of, of the pandemic, how many susceptible infections and recovery people there are, then you can simply go and put these equations, implement this equation in a for loop. And then from this for loop, you can, um, basically iteratively uh, produce what is the, the, the number of individual in each of the categories at a different, uh, at a different time, okay? Uh, we are using here, uh, so we, can, we have changed a little bit notation. Now we're using DT as, as the step size instead of 2A, the previous slides was just called 2A, but really it's nothing else than some particular step size. And, um, when solving these differential equations, of course, this will be only an approximation, uh, but it would be a good approximation if dt is small, and we can actually quantify the error that one is making by choosing this particular, um, or this, by choosing this particular form of, of solving differential equation. And it will be of order a squared, which means that it will go like a squared 
uh, quadratically to zero as we reduce the, the step size in the differential equations. Okay. Now let's consider a slightly more realistic model. It's not a huge change. We're what we're doing is we're moving from the SIR model to the SIRT or SIRT model. Uh, where there are now four different categories of people. So they're susceptible, which we already had, they're infectious, but we're now making a distinction in which uh, on, on the fate of what happens to the infectious population. So it can go into the category of diseased. Some people don't recover from the disease and it will go, or other people will actually recover and they will develop immunity. So we'll go into the, into the group of, of recovery. Okay. The main change is that um, the chain, the, the, there will be two different rates. So you can think of gamma as a recovery rate, but you can also think of mu here as the, as the uh, mortality rate of, of, of the, particular, uh, the particular infection, infection that we are here studying. Okay. Again, the total number of, of people in this, in this population will be the sum of all of these categories, and this will always be constant. So um, you can think of this as people in an island can either be susceptible, infectious, they can recover, they can disorder, or, or they can, uh, they can fall into the category of disease. Okay. It's mainly the same differential equations. All we do is split these transitions into two. Okay. So here's the differential equations, or in particular, here's the approximation uh, using a finite, size, uh, a finite set, step size. They look very similar to the ones we just saw. The only difference is now the infectious population has two different uh, ways of decreasing, one into the category of, uh, of recovered and one into the category of deceased. And then there's another, it's basically like splitting the one category that we had before into two different ones with two different parameters to, to characterize it. Okay. Here's, the, um, here's the, the differential equations that will be solved iteratively, again, by knowing how many people are in each category at some particular uh, time, we can add the increments based on how many, how, how many people get sick, how many people recover or, or, or become deceased and, uh, and so on. Okay, good. So now let's, um, let's look at the code. Um, let's look at a function that basically computes the change, uh, the change in, in, in populations that happens as, as, as the sickness uh, progresses. So this is the CERT model that has a, um, some particular time at some particular day, how many susceptible infectious recover and diseased people there are. These are arguments that are past the function. And there are the three parameters, which mean the infection rate, uh, the recovery rate, and the mortality rate. So the total, oops, sorry for that. Oops. The total population will be uh, the sum of all of this. And then we are implementing here the shift in the susceptibles. I'm oh, sorry, there's a typo here. The shift in the infectious, the shift in the recovered, and the shift in the, the deceased. And the function, um, the, the function will return each shift or the change in each of these populations. Uh, now, this is the first equation, an equation, uh, an equation that, re that returns how these populations change. And there's a second equation which shows, uh, which is the solver for the differential equation. Okay? So uh, basically we have to give it, um, have to give it the, um, the, the model, which in this case will be our CERT model and then which you can tune if you want to a different thing. And then we will have the different populations, which will be uh, lists of, of susceptible infectious recovery disease. The parameters of the model, which I remind you are uh, infection rate, recovery rate, mortality rate. And then we, 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 need to see, we need to say how we want to solve this. So we want to solve this using how many steps and how many, or how, how fine, or the step size of the, of the solver for the differential equation. And then there's a last flag here, output, which is nothing else than uh, just what do we want after, or what do we want this function to return? Do we want to return the infectious? Do we want to return to disease? And if you want, you can change this function and you can edit it to, um, to look into the, 
uh, to, to, uh, to access other categories like susceptible or record. Okay, uh, yeah, so before looking at the code, just, just give you an idea of, of how, how this would look. I'll show you an example of a Jupyter notebook. Um, so let's fix some of these parameters to so some values that you that you, that you like. So we have some particular recovery rate, uh, sorry, some particular infectious rate, some recovery rate and some mortality rate. We start with a big population that where everyone is susceptible and only a single individual is sick. And then we start evolving the differential equations. Here's the plot that you get. In the beginning, there will be very few infected people. And then as time evolves, there will be more and more infected. And slowly, as people get infected, some of them, unfortunately, will fall into the category or will transition to the category of deceased. Okay, notice that uh, this, you know, this is something that was being discussed a lot uh, two or three years ago, and was the hospital capacity. Uh, so some particular you know, state or city could have had a, uh, about a specific number of hospital beds, so you don't want to you don't want to uh, to saturate the this hospital. So you want to keep into mind what what uh, what is the limit that how many people actually hospitals can 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 take, and then you can try to think of this how how you can flatten the curve by reducing, for instance, the um, the infection rate. Right, so a way of reducing the infection rate the infection rate would be by making people see less people so that you know less susceptible people get, get into um, get in contact with, um, with infectious people. And this is what this was measures that were being implemented at uh, the time in 2020, 2021. Okay, so um, let's look into code now. So this is the function that we were just talking about, the third function where you have different changes I, I actually fixed the, the typo here. So you can see this is susceptible, infected, recovered, disease. Um, okay. Now we have here the differential equation. So we have a solver. You could think of you know, changing this function a little bit. So for instance, if you also wanted to return the number of, uh, of recovered, for instance, you could define this and return R. And this would be another option and you could, that you could, and you could change this also part. And then here's, here's the uh, here's the solver, where we have we start with choosing uh, choosing a year. So we will take step size of 0.1, which means that we take step size of one tenth of a day. Uh, if we have one tenth of a day and we have 3,650 steps, what we have is uh, 365 days, which is basically a year. Um, and then we start with making empty lists or empty arrays. Um, with our initial conditions of having a single infectious person on many, many which are susceptible, and then we choose some of the parameters here. Um, sorry, I need to restart this to actually make it plot. Wait a second. I need to think. You know, here we have a plot where we have um, a day, so a year, sorry, in time of the days, and we have here the hospital capacity, which is here, the infected and the disease. And now we can get, we can play around a little bit. So remember, um, uh, beta was the infectious rate. So let's make this sickness a little bit less infectious. So instead of 0.19, we can make it 0.09 and make the plot again. And you see how the peak is going down. So now it's at 600, a little bit below 600. So we can, for instance, even further reduce it to 0.4. And you see that now the peak is there. It's very, it's later, but also lower. And even it's, it's barely uh, saturating hospital. Yeah. So you can, uh, you can play around with these parameters. You could also think of making, uh, you know, making the, the, the time a little longer. Um, you can plot here. Like this, like this, a little bit of subsize. Oops, why is not? Where is the?
we've been making the plot for you know to make two years and now we have two years worth of time and you see that the peak is later but it really never saturates hospitals uh, you can even re, you know decrease it a little bit more and made it 35 here and it will actually never saturate the hospital and so on and so you can feel free to play with this code where you can kind of uh, make your own your own pandemic even though this sounds a little bit uh, perhaps not great but like you can you're, you can play with the model and see how it works. And this, these models can not only be used for COVID, but it can be used for the seasonal flu and things, things like that. So they, they can be really useful. And of course, you can make them arbitrarily complicated. You can think of them. You, may, you can add, for instance, the fact that people uh, develop immunity, but this immunity is only temporary. You can add things like that. You, could, uh, you can make more groups. You can separate infectious people in, in two different categories. Some of them that are more infectious, some of them that are less, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, well, so perhaps a good time for questions. Okay. I encourage you to, to play a little bit with uh, the, the uh, Jupyter notebook and with these functions. And, and even if you if you do a little bit of Google research, you can find a different model that you can try to implement with different differential equations and so on. So this this code that uh, they're showing you can be made very easily or can be adapted very easily to a different model by changing this function in here. The model in sorry, the model in particular. Um, and a little bit the solver as well, but, but it's, that's it. Okay, uh, well, um, so, unless there are questions, this is, this is all that I wanted to say uh, today. So feel free to investigate a little bit more on your own, uh, look at different models here in this page and, and and I hope you enjoyed the lectures and, um, and see you soon. Okay. Um, I think we're done for today. Uh, there were no questions in the chat that I saw. Um, so maybe we can stop recording and such. Um, Jeff, can you can we store stop recording? It's uh, still recording. Yeah, um, I don't think I can stop though. Uh, do you want us to stop the recording? Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, we're done for the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, bye.